So very good evening to you all, and hope you are doing well. Uh, Ramadan is fast approaching and uh, less than a month away. So today we are going to discuss a very important set of guidelines which were published in 2020 by the Society for Endocrinology. And the, this deals with the patient who are fasting uh, and have a background of adrenal insufficiency. So basically, here are the practical guidance for the healthcare professionals, those who are managing the patients on steroids during the Ramadan. And these were published in 2020. Again, it's a very important set of guidelines for the specialty certificate exams, as well as for the European board exam. And we are going to do this set of guidelines via a case-based approach. So let's start right away. What we're going to look at in this uh, particular lecture session is we'll try to stratify the risk in the fasting patients with background of adrenal insufficiency. So basically we'll look to classify them as low risk, moderate risk, high risk, or very high risk. Something similar what we have followed for the diabetes in Ramadan guidelines. Then we'll look at the detailed guidance which has been provided by the endocrine society for those who wish to fast with an underlying diagnosis of endogen insufficiency. And we are going to do all this guidance via different case-based scenarios. Uh, scenario one, we'll be talking here, will be with fasting with panhypopituitarism in the context of secondary AI or secondary adrenal insufficiency, including posterior pituitary involvement, which is diabetes insipidus. In the scenario two, we'll look at uh, fasting in a patient with ACTH deficiency. In scenario three, we'll look at fasting with a patient with primary adrenal insufficiency. Scenario four, we'll deal with how we should deal with a patient with multimorbidity and adrenal insufficiency. Scenario five, we'll deal with a patient of panhypopituitarism and secondary AI. And scenario six, we'll deal with pregnant mothers and also there is considerations for breastfeeding. So we'll look at all these case-based scenarios uh, to uh, justify how the guidelines have been put forward. So let's look at our first uh, diagram, which is very, very important uh, to understand. So patients who intend to fast, okay, in this scenario, if they don't intend to fast, then they should just continue with the current treatment. However, if they intend to fast, then we should always explore the patient wishes for Ramadan, including their spiritual beliefs, lifestyle, their work environment and the social circumstances. And based on all of this, we should risk stratify our patient into the following categories. Low to moderate risk, so that's like a green signal. High risk, so like that's an orange signal. And high, very high risk, so that's a red alert or a red signal. In scenarios where there is a very high risk or a high risk, we should try to explore alternative options like non-consecutive fast, means fasting only some of the days, or trial of fasting on shorter days, or only fasting when the fasting period comes during winter times. Or if that is all not possible, then to give fidya, which is basically giving money or uh, donation of food for the needy. Now, how to classify the risk? We'll look at the, in the next slide, which is again very, very important slide. In general, education, optimization, and emergency plan should be put forward. We should always educate the patient on the risk and reinforce the sick day rules of basically increasing the steroid dose when patient is sick. Optimize their steroid replacement. Always we should provide them with valid steroid injection pack, like for example of an IM hydrocortisone uh, and steroid warning card with contacts of the local endocrine team in the area. We should always advise the patients that they should terminate the fast and administer emergency steroid injection if they feel unwell or if they are developing symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. And we should plan this well ahead and consider trial fast, uh, ideally one month before Ramadan. So in the context where I mentioned that the very high risk and the high risk, you should try to explore the alternative options However, if the patient still chooses to fast, yes, then we need to make sure that we put forward the education, optimization, and emergency plans as I discussed in this particular chart. 
So risk stratification for fasting with adrenal insufficiency, a very important uh, flow chart for exams and a very important uh, chart in context of the clinical practice as well. So what do we classify as low and moderate risk? So those patients who are stable and well-controlled adrenal insufficiency and those who do not have any significant comorbidities. Also, patients with treated concomitant mineral or corticoid deficiency of moderate grade. What are high-risk patients? Those who have a recent diagnosis of steroid dependence within the last three months, even pregnant patients fall in the high-risk category. And then what is very high risk? Very high risk are the patients who should not fast. They are multi-morbidity patients, those who have a major organ system involvement. Those who have concomitant diabetes mellitus on insulin treatment. So basically concomitant insulin dependent diabetes mellitus alongside adrenal insufficiency. Those who have concomitant posterior pituitary involvement, which is diabetes insipidus. Those who had an episode of adrenal crisis in the last 12 months. Those who are untreated concomitant mineralocorticoid deficiency. So low or moderate risk was treated. Very high risk is untreated mineralocorticoid deficiency. And even those patients with untreated TSH deficiency fall in the category of very high risk as per the guidelines. What is the summary of guidelines as proposed by the Endocrine Society? Again, very important set of statements, two slides incorporating that. So patients on long-term glucocorticoid replacement wishing to fast should undergo a thorough risk assessment and we should classify them as per the risk stratification which we discussed in the previous slide. Again, high-risk and very high-risk patients should be encouraged to explore alternative options to the fasting. We looked at that in this particular slide. If they still insist to fast, then we should educate them about the risk and the things which they need to be aware of in the event if they feel unwell. All patients may receive up-to-date education on sick day rules. Again, I'm reinforcing the statement, very, very important, and they should be instructed when to terminate fast or abstain from fasting. Patients must have a valid intramuscular hydrocortisone pack and always should know how to administer it prior to the commencement of Ramadan. Patients on steroids for other conditions with no concerns regarding adrenal insufficiency should consult their specialist about whether fasting is safe and should continue the steroid treatment at the same dose. Again, ideally pregnant and breastfeeding patients with adrenal insufficiency should be advised against fasting. All patients should always be advised to carry a steroid warning card as I discussed in that slide. They should know how to use their IM hydrocortisone and if they know that even after using the IM hydrocortisone, if they still feel unwell, they should proceed to the hospital emergency for IV fluids and IV steroids, which can be life-saving. Now, in the context of fasting and those patients who are on multiple daily hydrocortisone replacement and those who wish to fast, it will be a good plan to switch them to once daily prednisolone, which will be taken during suhoor time or dawn time or basically sehri time. So in an ideal patient, those who will be on a hydrocortisone replacement of around 15 to 30 milligram per day, we can go for a dose of 5 to 7.5 milligram of prednisolone once a day in the morning time, and that should be sufficient. What about fludrocortisone replacement? Patients of fludrocortisone for adrenal insufficiency should be advised to take their total dose at dawn, that is doing suhoor or sehri, and they should avoid prolonged sun exposure during the day. Now let's look at scenario one, uh, which is taken into consideration the guidelines and the risk stratification, which we discussed in the previous slides. Here we have a fasting patient with pan hypopituitarism, secondary adrenal insufficiency, and this patient has got pituitary uh, or posterior involvement of the posterior pituitary and uh, having diabetes insipidus. So Mr. X is a 54-year-old gentleman with pan hypopituitarism, which has been secondary to a pituitary adenoma, which has which is now managed. I mean, the pan hypopituitarism is now managed with 10 mg of hydrocortisone in waking and 5 mg at lunchtime. Nebido, which he takes one gram every four months. Levothyroxine, which is 100 microgram, and desmopressin, which he takes 10 microgram nasally twice per day. So clearly, this patient has got. Uh, pan-hypopituitarism, 
replaced with hydrocortisone, testosterone, thyroxine, and in context of the diabetes insipidus, receiving desmopressin as well. He wishes a uh, desire to fast during the month of Ramadan, and he's now asking you the practicality about doing this. So, Mr. X has clearly got uh, panhypocriterism along with posterior pituitary involvement or diabetes insipidus. Alongside that, he's got cortisol, thyroid, and gonadotropin deficiency for which he's getting replacement. So clearly, he falls in the high-risk category. Now, if you remember our risk stratification, which we mentioned, if the patient has got a concomitant pituitary diabetes insipidus, this will be classified as very high risk. So to be very clear, this patient is a very high risk category and therefore this patient should be advised not to fast and the clinician should explain the risk of severe dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, along with the risk of adrenal crisis to this patient. The patient's anterior hormone deficiencies is not a major issue that can be easily managed. However, in terms of the posterior pituitary involvement, which is the diabetes insipidus in this particular patient, given the prolonged fast and disruption in the regulating fluid and electrolyte hemostasis, which may occur during fasting, uh, there are no safe management strategies that can be considered. Thus, fasting should be strongly discouraged on health grounds. So again, I'm saying this patient is a very high risk category. Here it's been written as high risk, but it is actually a very high risk category this patient is in. Furthermore, the intake of desmopressin oral or intranasal is obviously not permissible during the fast. Even non-consecutive fasting or winter fast will be risky in this particular situation. So what should be the alternatives? The healthcare practitioner should discuss alternatives to fasting such as fidya. To help aid discussions, input from other family members or local imam can be considered. If the patient still chooses to proceed with fasting, then he should be counseled on the potential risk, including very high risk of dehydration and hypernatremia. He should make sure that he's adequately hydrated during the non-fasting hours uh, with water rather than electrolyte rich fluids. They should be strongly advised to have a low threshold to terminate the fast if they do, do decide to fast and they should be encouraged to hydrate themselves well in the uh, scenario. So that's the case scenario one, very high risk category patient advised not to fast. So that's the free view. Uh, again, uh, there are five other scenarios which we'll be discussing in the full session for this particular lecture. So a total of six scenarios has been discussed. For access to the full video for this particular lecture, please subscribe to my lecture series, which is called Mastering Endocrinology and Diabetes by Dr. Mazar Dalvi. And uh, already all my subscribers are aware that there are a total of 55 existing videos. And all of these videos will be given access to in the lecture series. Alongside this, all my upcoming lectures in the coming weeks leading up to the exams uh, this year, the specialty exam in European board will be included in the same subscription class. So if you wish to subscribe, please contact me on my email ID, which is mentioned here, or you can WhatsApp me on my number, which is 0097155743 Thank you very much. Thank you so much.